Sup guys, welcome back. So today we have a video that's been super requested recently and I did do one, in fact I've probably done several of these, but like quite a long time ago and this is an updated bookshelf tour. I touched briefly on my bookshelf in my room tour so if you haven't already looked at that go check out that video, I will link it down in the description. This is going to be me going through my bookshelf in like a lot more detail, probably give some book recs and like talk a bit more about what's actually on my bookcase, actually with the merchandise and stuff, go into a bit more detail. Strap in, this is probably gonna be a long haul because you know me, I'm the queen of tangents and I love to go off on one. And remember to keep your video suggestions coming in the comments, I'm having a lot of fun filming at the moment. And make sure, before you go anywhere, before you do anything, subscribe to me, you know you want to, please, please subscribe. Like this video and yeah, <laughs> let's look at my bookshelf. <laughs> also, um, just popping back in to say um, I got some complaints in my room tour that I was moving the camera around a lot and being quite shaky. I'm sorry, my handshake when I have a coffee in the morning. So I'm going to try and use my tripod for as much of this as possible to sort of minimise that because I do like to make sure that this is an enjoyable experience for you guys. So um, sorry if some of the angling's off, I'm just getting used to using my tripod for things that aren't just staring at my face for a video. For those of you that haven't seen my bookcase, this this is what it is. Just gonna sort of go through, like I said, and explain everything that is on it. It's gonna start up at the top. So my top shelf, um, actually, I'm just gonna tell you about the bookcases themselves. Um, if you do want bookcases like this, they're from Ikea. Um, I believe they're the Billy bookcases. I can't be 100% sure, I've had them for a while now, um, but they come in a variety of colours and I just like these ones and that they come separately and the one in the middle is like a separate one that you can just pop anywhere, um, but it just makes it all fit and look a lot nicer. So anyway, up onto my top shelf, we have um, sort of an array of things. I know my broomstick's kind of getting in the way, that's been suspended from my ceiling for literally ever um, and I keep meaning to take it down, but I actually I'm too fond of it to take it down. Up at the top we have two different things actually up here. This is kind of one of my more cluttered shelves. Now at the back there you can see those weird like tubes with what looks like Harry in it. I'm just gonna try and zoom in. Those Harry tubes, I've got like four of them stacked on top of each other. Those are 2001 merch, which I believe you can get on eBay still. I haven't actually purchased any 2001 merch in a while now because I am trying to sort of reduce my consumption of actual goods. Like this is weird coming from a merch collector, but I really am trying to sort of reduce my, my physical purchases because as I've grown older, I've realised that physical material things are really not important and experiences are. So that's my little nugget of wisdom for today. Um, and as much as I do love collecting merch still, um, it's it's just a thing that I don't have the space for and I also don't have the money for and it, ultimately when I die it will end up in a landfill. Anyway, those are these things that are like tubes and you look in the top of them and it gives you like information about the character and stuff. So they were, again, 2001 merch, but you can find them on eBay. Next to that is the Hogwarts Express money jar tin slash ceramic thing, which is from Primark. And again, on the other side of it, we've also got the um, night bus version, which is also a money tin from Primark. And in front of it is a Hogwarts Hedwig snow globe, which is also from Primark. I just think they look kind of cool. And then next to that, we have this cool um, cauldron which says sweets they always help you make friends now I uh, I did that myself it was a cauldron that I bought off Amazon in fact I'm gonna come up here and, and sort of show you what what the deal is I bought this from Amazon for literally like five pounds because I wanted to use it for a Halloween party I was having and the sweets they always help you make friends is a quote from Cursed Child that Scorpius says and um, at the Halloween party I filled it with sweets obviously but at the moment I I've just climbed on my bed to try and show you this better um, it's filled with the um, little pop final surprise things that you can get and you don't know what they're going to be until you open them um, and so I've got a ton of them because I got gifted a ton of them I also collected them myself so that's really cool and I don't have room to display them with the other other pop vinyls ever on my pop vinyl shelf at the moment because I'm still trying to work out like space and stuff behind there we've got my magical creatures collection um I would move stuff out of the way but this is going to take five ever if I do. I'll just try and move that so you can see a little bit more. So I've got Dobby, I'm not actually sure who's behind Dobby. Oh, we've got Hedwig, Dobby, Dementors, 
some other things and then on this side I've got two of the Fantastic Beast ones which I've got Picket and the Okami. The Okami was kindly sent to me by um, a lovely girl called Sarah who sent me the most amazing gift package like um, I think maybe last year and I, when I move out I want to be able to display things properly so that I can actually look at them because space at the moment um, at like my family home is kind of limited. I'm trying to cram a lot of stuff into this room. In front of here we now have my Hogwarts pop vinyl people. I got this in my first year of uni and I absolutely love it. You can get them from the Funko website, from Amazon, from I think even um, the Warner Brothers Studio tour now. Um, my Harry's glasses snapped off because I dropped him in the move from my university halls where I first got these to then my other uni house and then back home so they kind of got a bit destroyed which I'm super sad about but um, I do actually love this I love the pop vinyls I haven't been able to collect them in a while because of space and also just uh, it's a lot of money to try and keep up with them wow there's a cobweb uh, on my ceiling that's nice of them I can't actually remember how much they were um, they're on the pricier end for pop vinyls but definitely worth it if you want to get the whole set because um, you do you can buy each carriage individually and they each come with a different person so whether it be Hermione Ron or Harry I believe now over here we have I've got a bunch of wands behind my um, plushies that you can see here and I will do a separate wand video if that's something people are interested in so do make sure you comment down below if you would be interested in that so I know I've got I think I've got Fleur's wand behind here a Hermione wand um a Serafina wand from Fantastic Beasts um, and a few other Fantastic Beasts ones and stuff um, but then the plushies I've got in front of here so these are from an array of places mostly from Tesco's actually which is surprising because Tesco's and Sainsbury's which are if you're not in the UK they're like supermarkets um, I guess you could compare them to like Target I, I would imagine I don't know they do food and they also do like homeware and stuff you can get these from an array of places like Amazon toy shops and that kind of thing um, these were like £10 each I think I got the Voldemort for Valentine's Day from Connor. I know we're very romantic and then the other two Harry I'm not sure where his glasses are they got lost in the move between um, home and my uni flat um, but I've also got another one of him which is in my uh, summer house which is sort of my Harry Potter museum um, which I'm gonna do okay I keep talking about other videos in this video which I realize is really good for this purposes of this video but I'm gonna film a separate video about my shed because um, I've done a lot of work in there at the moment and it's really turning into a Harry Potter museum and I think it'd be cool to show you guys that so let me know if you're interested. So the task in hand. Um, then I've got Hermione in her Yule Ball outfit, Hagrid and then that little Dobby is actually again from um, the lovely girl Sarah and I'm not actually sure it's from but it's at one of my favorite things he looks kind of like the Pokemon ditto like you know when like <laughs> you can get the toys that's like a, a Pokemon or like a Pikachu but like ditto and his face just reminds me of that which I love because ditto is like the best um, and then I've got the toad which is Neville's toad which is just chilling behind there and he was from the Harry Potter studio tour and I believe he was like 11.95 which is not bad for a studio tour plushy so bringing you back down towards my like actual books we're going to talk about books I realize it's taken me a long time to get here so I've run out of space which is why I've had to start stacking them like this um, which I don't like I don't think it looks particularly nice I know other people manage to get it to look really cool when they stack books like this I just don't seem to have that knack eventually when I move out some of my more like Harry Potter display things from this bookcase into my sort of shed museum outside then um, I'll be able to sort of rearrange my books and make them look cooler but for now this is what we're working with I do organize my books by color I know I get a lot of comments from either people being like oh my god I love it or oh my god you absolute heathen how could you split up series and it just how do you find anything so I like to color coordinate things because I believe it looks better I love the look of any bookcases really because I love books however I for me and um i don't know i don't i talk about having depression a lot on this channel but i don't talk about my ocd um it, it's quite it used to be really bad when i was a kid in fact, the, uh, i'm doing that weird thing again that i did in my t room tour where i talk to you about something but i'm not actually talking to you i'm showing you like a really still slash weirdly shaking image of like something in my room basically i'm <laughs> oh my god i told you i would go off on tangents so why am i talking about ocd I'll quickly touching it because it kind of explains a lot about my room and why things are the way they are so I, ocd is not just like oh things have to be tidy like I'm not saying I have OCD to be like, <laughs> I love things to be neat, I have OCD. Um, when I was a kid, it used to be way worse. Counting things, I would like scream and cry when things were not good. Like it, 
it's a whole thing I might do a separate video on it because it's something I haven't really spoken about on this channel um, but I've mm, it's one of my proudest things actually like in regards to most of <laughs> I'm literally stood on my bed and touching my light in regards to like all my other like mental health things slash health things that I have to overcome in my everyday life um I have really mastered the whole OCD thing and I'm very proud of myself like in as I've grown up it's the thing that I've managed to gain the most control over um I don't freak out like I used to anymore I do have my moments still um where things get just like really awful and they cause panic attacks but things are chill like usually the books being stacked like the way they are at the moment that would cause me some intense pain but as long as they're in colour order it's fine I don't know I started doing it when I was in secondary school we had the really small library like literally not even the size of this bedroom like half the size of this bedroom a small library and I was like can I just reorganize the books next they were literally all over the place they weren't even in, in alphabetical order or anything and um they were like yeah sure reorganize them and our school had this charity called Rose's Rainbow Fund um and I used to sing in the charity choir and stuff and I was like oh I could rainbow organize the books it would satisfy me and it like works for the school and stuff so I did that and then from then on I've never been able to have bookcases that aren't rainbow coloured but I think it's a look and a lot of people do it so if you have an issue soz I managed to find all my books perfectly fine because I know what colour like I associate colours with things anyway um and also if I know a book well then I know what the colour of it the spine is so I know where to look for it so it's, it's not it's not an issue back to the task in hand and uh, none of you asked for my life story so on to this top shelf I'm just going to give like a few book recs from each shelf if that's something people are interested in so on this top shelf I have like all my penguin classics I don't know if people have seen the ad for penguin classics at the moment and it's like really old battered books and like looking really loved and worn and I love it it's one of my favorite ads maybe ever and I could use literally any of mine for it because um probably like my Plato the Republic and the Iliad are my least least well read um but like oh my god my Aeneid is literally dead and it's probably got an awful lot of yeah oh my god okay so I'm going to put down my tripod to show you guys this the amount of writing and wait I've just flipped pages where there is not a lot of writing and oh, wow this is going really well writing underlines stuff I actually really my task for this summer is to reread these because I miss it um I used to the reason it's got loads of writing in don't call me a heathen I know you will and that's really out of focus basically I studied these at a level and uh, that's why they're so dead in fact my odyssey is probably worse um the odyssey yeah that's definitely well more well worn um but i love them and i would recommend them to anyone i love a good greek play slash epic they're amazing um so i would recommend any of these i definitely recommend the odyssey for getting into um like greek epics and uh greek art basically because the odyssey is an absolute classic and um it's also I would consider it an easy read for getting into it. The story is quite easy to pick up and um, I just love it and I, I really want to reread it. On the same thread I would recommend the Percy Jackson series because it's what first got me into like ancient Greece mythology and all that kind of thing when I was a kid and um, they mean a lot to me just personally um, and yeah so I'd recommend them definitely. I haven't actually read Heroes yet by Stephen Fry, I keep meaning to and that again that's mythology and stuff which I keep meaning to read but I really want to. Come down to the next shelf, this is my black and brown shelf. I have some cool books on here that I really love my Sherlock Holmes and Noble collection version which again everything on here is filthily dusty I just love it this it's a really beautiful book um it's got this like beautiful cover back back cover beautiful front cover and it's got this like gold embossed spine and it's also got really nice just it's just a really beautiful book um that I keep getting scared to like actually read because I don't want to break the spine like I'm really weird some books I'm like destroy it with my love and other books I'm like no keep it in pristine condition so I'd, I would recommend that just because it's cute um up here oh I have stay sexy don't get murdered which I definitely recommend I literally only read it a couple of weeks ago um and it's by Karen and Georgia Hardstark who have the podcast my favorite murder and if you haven't listened to it I would highly recommend it because it's literally one of my favorite things ever um so yeah just read it it's not about murderers really it's kind of about their lives but also it has murder involved so it's like cool even if you're like not a true crime fan it's just really interesting and cool so I, I would still recommend it anyway move down I'm gonna 
I'm gonna inch the, oh, this is my red shelf. Um, I would highly recommend, so I've got Career of Evil and Silkworm next to each other here because they are colours that match. Um, and I would recommend them. They're the JK Rowling books that are written under the pseudonym Robert Galbraith. And if you're into crime novels, they are really good. I don't read a lot of crime, it's something I want to read more of. And my parents, well, my dad is really into reading crime and um, it's something I wish I read a lot more of. Um, they're quite intense, like some of the, like I think it was with Silkworm or Career of Eagle, Evil, when I read it I was like, I feel sick, but in a good way. It was, it was very good, so I would recommend that. Um, and then obviously I have my lovely Hank bobblehead which both of my bobbleheads are broken because they've fallen off my shelf and snapped but they're glued back together and I love it because I love Hank and John. I'm, I've been a nerd fighter for since as long as I've been on the internet really so um that's really cool um and then down here actually just before I move on I would highly recommend Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda or as most people know it Love Simon um based on the film well the film is based on the book and um it's really good and I will talk a little bit about the sequel to that in my next shelf because that's where it is. I highly recommend that and also I would highly recommend The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. I've seen the play twice and it's honestly incredible and it's also just a really really good read so if you can't get to see the play it usually goes on tour like once a year like I see it going on tour so often so if you keep an eye out for it and you, if you've got a local theatre that go that takes things that go on tour a lot but if you can't go and see it reading the book is the next best thing. Theatre is weird because a lot of the time I find theatre is the like with films that are made of books the book is always better in my opinion but as a uh, person heavily involved in theatre um, and who loves theatre I and I don't get me wrong I love films as well but I find theatre is very rare like it's rare but it's often oh, wow that didn't even make any sense and theatre is often better than the book as opposed to film being better than the book um, but that's because I think theatre is a really unique medium and a way to get across stories that is immersive it captures the essence of books in a way that film doesn't but it provide you with an interactive experience so that's why I think a lot of the time Psycho like Monster Calls fantastic book incredible book a very good film not quite on the books level but the play oh my lord I, I think that's going on tour so check out A Monster Calls online see if you can get tickets because oh my god that play changed my entire life like it was insane anyway onto this shelf this is my blue and pink and purple shelf um and we've got my John bobblehead I've correlated them to their t-shirt colour colours to where they go. Um, I've also got my sonic screwdriver here. I'm a Doctor Who fan. You'll have seen I have some Doctor Who books up there as well. Uh, not so much anymore. Um, I do really love Doctor Who and I'm a big fan of Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor. I think she's insane. Um, so before I hate on that, I, I do love her as that. Um, it's just not something that I spend a lot of my time re-watching like I used to. Um, so on this shelf, my recommendations would highly, highly, highly be um, Leah on the offbeat. This is a sort of sequel to Love, Simon in that the characters are all the same and you do hear about Simon and Bram and that lot still a little bit, but it's mostly focused on Leah um, and I really like it because I've never read um, really actually I, I think this might this is a, sh a shameful thing but I think this is the first book I've read with a um, like a lesbian protagonist or like a or a bisexual protagonist or you know people that are in fact this is the first book I think I've read where it's there's, it's been an openly bi character which is very important to me um, and I yeah so that was really weird and very nice to see that in a book and having that storyline like I've read quite a few stories now that have um two gay male characters in it um and I, I love those stories um I really adore them but it was nice to have the female perspective on that because that's something that I never see really unless it's being like fetishized which is like a big problem for um like lesbian relationships and stuff they're always fetishized or turned into something weird and or quite often abusive so it's nice to see just like a nice thing happen <laughs> so yeah um i'd recommend that and then i have over here like a bunch of just like my books i used to read as a kid a lot so like the the jacqueline wilson books which gave me like weird trauma issues from reading about traumatic things when I was a kid. Um, and then other than that on here, I would recommend Coraline by Neil Ga Gaiman. I, I love anything by Neil Gaiman, but um, Coraline is like cool. And when I read it, I read it after I watched the film, which um, I, I, I don't, I, I, the film, I love it. And I love the book, but they exist as separate entities for me because they are very, very different. Like there's characters in the film that just don't exist in the book. Um, and I think they both did the story justice and 
uh, just did a really good job we were liars again just before i move on this is a book that i read a long time ago now actually and it has just like the weirdest plot twist and i still don't really understand what i read so it's a book that i've been meaning to reread for so long but it takes a lot of brain power and i i think i've spoken about this before but i tend to shy away from reading things that i know are gonna give me like pain or trauma like are gonna make me feel things it's weird and i also do the same with books and stuff but it's a real testament to my in fact i'm doing that i'm doing that thing again where i'm talking to you but not talking to you um i do that i can't it's a testament to like where i am in a mentally and like where i'm feeling in my brain as to what i consume media wise because sometimes a lot of the time like 99 percent of the time if i know a book or a film is going to cause me to be like upset or like it's going to be like loads of turmoil i just don't watch or read I don't know when I started doing that but like a while back now which is why I don't read as much I don't read anywhere near as much as I used to um for, for a number of reasons but I think that's like the number one reason um and I wish I what I'm trying to like work my way to getting over that issue that I've somehow built up because I do like reading things and obviously I love reading things that make me feel things but I the thought of it the thought of putting myself through something really just takes it out of me these days so i don't do it um but anyway back back to the task in hand we're going to move on i've got so many blue books something that i've learned from color coordinating a lot of shelves is that blue is a very common color for book covers onto like some more blue now i get this all the time why do you have three copies of the fault in our stars in fact why do you have four because if those keen-eyed of you will see that i also have a black copy up on my black shelf basically i've told this story about a million times so i've got the normal blue one which i got when it came out um because I, I i got it when it came out and i spent all well i actually got it for christmas when it came out and i spent all christmas day reading it so that's how sociable i am on christmas um but the other two copies i got when i went to an advanced screening of the fort and our staff that I, that I got invited to um and it was like a cool event thing um and basically i was put in one screening room where we all got one on our seat and then i got moved to a second screening room because me and my the people i was there with were being very loud and like excited which they loved it was annoying they were like filming stuff for the promo and they wanted people that were like buzzing so they moved us into another screen to film some more stuff and we got given another book so that's why i have three there and then the black one which is up there i got a paper town screening that i got invited to which was like a q a thing with the cast and i met john green and it was a very very cool day but yeah i got given i don't know why they didn't give out paper towns didn't make a lot of sense to me um but i got given a black version of the four now stars so yes yeah, so this shelf the the rest of this shelf is mostly just like a bunch of oh actually this has got some of my favorite things um this is these are my antidepressants a bit of sertraline and some medical things um anyone else on sertraline hit me up it's always a fun time anyone else got insomnia because hashtag same so this is actually got a lot of things that i love so patrick ness is one of my favorite authors ever he just comes up with really original ideas and then executes them beautifully so um the rest of us just live here is so smart and it's something that i'd like thought about for a while but i would never know how to even go about creating and he oh he's just a smart writer and it makes me I just I make it makes me fall in love with like actual writing um and then release again was very good although not as good as his previous stuff I mean it was it was still good but like just when you've got like the rest of us just live here and more than this and a monster calls to follow uh, it's very hard to follow um and then armada by ernest klein um is an excellent book um he also wrote ready player one which is very similar to armada um similar sort of like very pop culture heavy references when it comes to gaming and um nerdy stuff which i love but also don't understand a lot of the references because i'm not a gamer whether's connor um my boyfriend manages to like like when we went to see ready player one he just lost it because the amount of references in it and he just he loved it so again excellent books and ernest klein is a fantastic writer it was also an absolutely remarkable thing by hank green i really liked it i didn't know what to expect coming from you know it's so weird to have like john be such a prolific writer for like a, a whole generation of people and i know john's writing is kind of controversial now like people are like well yeah um i still really like it reading back on it now like some of it seems so pretentious but i'm like he captures the essence of what it's like to be a teenager who is pretentious in that they feel like they are smart um because teenagers are smart and i i, I it's a difficult to read it back now and 
think about how I felt about it as a teenager but like I think it's important because he writes it for those teenagers um so I do I still love John Green and Hank's book was really fantastic it was very original um I love the idea and I can't wait for the sequel um and then on this shelf I've got some like old school classics that I just I say old school classics they're classics to me um like Molly Moon um is a, a just I, it's a book that just reminds me of my childhood and I've reread it so many times. In fact, I've read the whole series and it's about a girl that just like learns how to do hypnotism and she's an orphan. There's a really shit film on Netflix that they made of it, which they literally were casting for years because I remember getting a casting call for it when I was literally in secondary school and I must have been in year eight or nine. Um, and then the film literally came out like last year or the year before, I think. So if you want to watch it, like it's not awful, it just doesn't capture the essence of the book, but it, it's on Netflix. So if you are hella bored, go check it out. And now onto my final, I literally am gonna have to take my camera off in order to film this, bear with. I've de-tripoded, sorry for the shaking, but I couldn't reach the bottom without, um, with my tripod. So down here I've just then got it sort of blue fading into green. Um, again, I've got some like old school classics that I love down here, like Anne of Green Gables, which like they were the books that got me into reading when I was a kid. Like I've always wanted, to, like my biggest goal when I was a child um, was learning to read. Like I remember being like three years old. It's probably one of my earliest memories actually next to like my first time watching Harry Potter. Um, I was in the library with my mum and she was like just flipping through books and I was like, oh my god, you were the coolest person ever that you can just pick up a book and read it. And like I thought that was insane. Like I thought that was like a superpower. So when I learned to read, my whole world changed. I was like, mate, I can I can do anything. Um so here I've got um, my ancient Greece in 30 seconds and ancient Rome in 30 seconds, and they're very good books for like an overview. Obviously, I studied um, both ancient Greece and ancient Rome and I miss learning about them and I also miss the knowledge I used to have about them because my brain is like a sieve and I don't hold on to information for very long um, but so these are nice refresher books and also if you don't know anything about them they're very good introductory books as well um, which I really really like um, so yeah that's basically everything I have to say about this shelf this is kind of kind of a dead shelf to me at the moment here we now have like we're on to some merchy stuff so if you only came here for the merch and not the books then the, now is the time for you um, I have these versions of the Harry Potter books do I I do have all of them now I, I didn't know if I did or not I'm just gonna move the pygmy puff out of the way so these are cool versions of the books they're like these really beautiful like they've got these cool illustrations on them they're all a different colour than their like casing on the outside and I would get them all out but that's going to take a lot of time. I might do a separate video on all my versions of the Harry Potter books because I seem to have accumulated a lot in my time um, and I think these are just from Bloomsbury um, but they're they're just really really nice copies of the books to have um, and I've also got the Quidditch to the Ages and Tales of Beedle the Bard Hogwarts Classics version there and then this is an old game from like uh, Toys R Us when I was a kid I just put it up there because it fits and it's an, an Aragog chapter game which is basically like it just opens up and it's like an Aragog playing set kind of thing and then I have these two I've got Love Potion and Felix Felices now these are Noble Collection but I believe they were purchased on eBay for a lot cheaper than you can get them on Noble Collection um, but you can get these either in the Noble Collection store or at the Harry Potter Studio Tour something I found about Noble Collection stuff like this is that it's a lot cheaper at the Studio Tour than it is in the Noble Collection shop either online or in Covent Garden um, so it's definitely worth having looking around because you can get them for a lot cheaper than you might think um, and they're just really nice display pieces to have I've never worn the necklaces just because I don't want them to get broken or damaged um, and they just look kind of cool and then my pygmy puff this is a purple one which I got from the Harry Potter Studio Tour and I believe it was like 11 95 or something but you can also get it in pink this is one of the first ones I bought before I got my big one and I just really like her I think I think she's really cute and really cool coming on to this shelf this is actually one of my most favorite shelves just because it kind of looks really aesthetic to me so I've got this cool print in the background which one of my friends from college made me because she did like typography stuff and she gave it to me I think it was for Christmas or a birthday at some point um, and she was so cool like she was one of the first people that I made friends with at college through our love of Harry Potter um, and she moved to like China or somewhere somewhere cool she moved to somewhere awesome and um, so we're not really in contact anymore but hey Liv if you're out there I still love and appreciate this gift you gave me um, it's very very cool and so this is a happiness can be found even in the Dugster Times thing and then I've got my Hagrid which if you've watched <laughs> my recent actually no my second recent 
sketch video you'll know he's from um this is um a 2001 merch that i got on ebay and he's just really cool he's just a hagrid plush um and then we've got my two crystal balls this is the dementor one and this is like a weird serpent one dragon one kind of thing and i love these like these are some of my absolute favorite pieces of merch i think they're so cool although my dementor one keeps slipping really precariously it's like dementor sat on top of hogwarts it's so cool um and then we've got my pewter figures these are very important to me i love these figures i think i went into detail about why i love this this little guy right here so much in my room tour video so if you have i'm not gonna repeat the story because you guys will get v annoyed at me because i tend to repeat myself a lot um so if you want to know the story behind this one get go and watch my room tour because um yeah and then this is a knife blade the one that bellatrix kills dobby with that i got in the geek gear box and this is a little hedwig in a cage that is part of the harry potter sticker kit collections which you can get from amazon and waterstones probably more places but those are the main places moving on to my probably most controversial shelf here she is it's my cursed child shelf everyone um so for those of you that might be new around here i love cursed child i know don't unsubscribe don't hate me um the show means a lot to me i've seen it now an embarrassing amount of times which i'm not going to disclose here because like, i'm very fortunate to live close to london and i can get cheap tickets um so and i actually took my friends like my non-cursed child friends for the first time the other day and they loved it and it was honestly one of the nicest experiences like i've made the most amazing friends from this show like shout out to like Gemma, who's like one of my main my main pals in life i think like Gemma's just really cool and i would never know her if it wasn't for this show um and i wouldn't know like all of the like the gang that of the people that i've spent a lot of time with at the show um if it wasn't for the show obviously um which has become like such a big part of my life um the show means a lot to me i know the story is controversial and i get it like i get that the story has issues and i completely understand people's like gripes with it but for me the show has given me a lot of friendship and um it's a combination of my two favorite things in life which are harry potter and theater and it as a show as a spectacle it is really special um so i've got i've got a couple of copies copies of the book i think this might be my one signed by the cast and then i've got programs signed by each of the cast um that i've seen all four years and then i've got playbills um that luckily i got given from a friend that saw it in america when i was in broadway i couldn't see it because it's very expensive um this is one of my owls from the show and then when you go to see the show you get given badges and this whole thing <laughs> is filled with badges so do with that what information what you will yeah I, i've got a lot a lot of badges and then this actually is a feather from one of the costumes in the show that was like escaped stage door one day and so I, I i took it because it was on the ground and i wanted it um and then these are two wands this is i've got albus and scorpius is here i don't have the rest of the wands yet i really want to get them um and then this i got on broadway this is the cd of the music in the show the music on the show is beautiful um but i got the broadway version because it has the broadway it has the lyric theater on the outside and the um uk one has the um palace on the outside i don't have the uk one yet and then behind there is some photo books from the different casts while i'm on the subject of cursed child i'll just bring you down here oh oh my god this is a mess on the floor just don't judge me but i've got a cursed child tote bag there and i've also got my cursed child vinyl which i would if you've got a vinyl player i would recommend getting because um hearing the soundtrack on vinyl is like a religious experience um and i love it um the soundtrack i don't even care if you've never seen the show and if you don't like the show the soundtrack is beautiful and you should listen to it it's on spotify and amazon and itunes please sponsor me cursed child i spend a lot of my money there so yeah i won't say any more about that because people will get annoyed at me um so moving on to the next shelf um we have this is kind of my Weasley's Wizard Weezes shelf slash like random stuff shelf. So I've got obviously this is not gosh, the Harry Potter related. This is my um, it's a bobblehead, but it's also a pop vinyl and it's Spider Gwen. For those of you that don't know, Spider Gwen is my fave gal. She's like and I didn't actually talk about my comics while I was on that shelf. But Spider Gwen is my fave. I'm like quite a few issues behind at the moment because um, I'm broke and can't afford um, to purchase them online. But I when I um, get some money i'm gonna catch up because i love love spider gwen she's like the only 
well one of the first comics that like I actually got into reading um so up here I'll just quickly show you because I didn't talk about these so I've got a bunch of comics so that's um Silk which I also love Silk um but these are some Spider Gwen like comics and then I've also got some of these which kind of got me um Spider Geddon um I the Spider People are my favorite part of the MCU um and like well not even the mcu they're just my favorite part of marvel because obviously they're not really heavily featured in the mcu yet other than spider-man and obviously my other earth people in um into the spider-verse spider-verse is like an app it's probably one of my favorite films of all time it's an absolute masterpiece and not just because my favorite chick features in it um anyway on to the other things so i've got this cycling dolores umbridge which is quite cool i got it from the harry studio tour i think it was like 1995 or something like that um and then I've got my punching telescope, boxing telescope, which doesn't work anymore, which is weird considering I've used it maybe twice. Um, and as you can see, I've I talked about light damage in my last video because everything on these shelves basically... I don't have curtains. I've recently got this blackout blind thing which has suckers that like attaches to the window. Um, but basically I'm the worst and don't have curtains. So everything has got severely light damaged, which sucks um, because I didn't really think about it. But, you know, that's life. Um, and then I've got this fizz... Uh, what even is it? Flying... A, a fanged flyer fanged frisbee it's actually called fanged frisbees in in the in the books but they called it a fanged fryer flyer for some reason um and i've spoken about this in a few of the videos but it's basically just a foam disc with a weird glove um it was like 11.95 or something I, if you like collecting these pieces and you think it's cool to have the packaging and the products then go for it they're never the highest quality apart from my favorite gal in here this is the extendable ear and honestly still up there with one of my favorite pieces of merchandise ever because it actually works like and it was the one of the first things i ever bought from the harry potter studio tour and it was only like 1995 or something and i think that's so good considering it actually works and yeah it's just a really cool thing then we have a remember all down here and they've recently started selling this again and again this was like 9.95 or 11.95 or something um and it doesn't work anymore which is again weird because i've only ever pressed the button a couple of times but it used to glow um red but it's quite cool and it would be useful for me for like sketches in the future um and then this is an amortentia um candle which i haven't actually lit have i lit it i don't know but i think i should because yeah i must have lit it at some point but i don't remember what it smells like and i would really like to light that again and that was from primark and i don't know how much it was probably like six or seven pounds um and then these are my spectra specs which i got from amazon for like 12 pounds and then you couldn't buy them anywhere for a really long time unless you found them on ebay but they i when i went into the platform nine three quarter shop at king's cross the other day they've started selling them in these cool little pouches and i think they were maybe like 15 pounds or something which is really good and they looked cool and i was literally this close this close to buying some and then my friend was like laura you literally have some like what are you doing because i'm trying to save money because we, me and my pal uh katie we want to move to london um like asap and um obviously when i'm and my job at the moment my waitressing job like that i'm not really getting any hours so it's kind of problematic for me which is why like money's super tight at the moment um so yeah i need to not do that and not spend money when um i am trying to sort my life out and then these are dumbledore glasses they did have um glass in them and then at king's cross on september 1st like a couple of years back um they fell out i don't i don't really know what happened but i was dressed up as dumbledore sort of and yeah they popped out but i kind of like them better without them and i have no idea where i got them from i'm guessing i bought them on ebay a long time ago but they've become very useful since i've started doing the sketches so well worth it if you're into that kind of thing and then on this shelf we have a sort of a bunch of different things we have all my harry potter illustrated so the fantastic beast speed of the bard philosopher's stone chamber of secrets prison of azkaban honestly the books are so big i have no idea what they're going to do with the with the next couple of books because obviously they they are a lot larger than these ones um but i'm really interested to see and oh, i think they're some of the most beautiful beautiful things and i love the illustrations inside them and i think they're definitely worth the money as well um and then we have a bunch of random stuff we have my quidditch box which is by the same people that do the sticker kits but obviously it's not a sticker kit um and i won't open it up now because i actually did a separate video on it when i first got it god it must have been a couple of years ago now and that's like a mini quidditch box with all the quidditch balls in it um and then we've got this golden egg which i got in a geek gear box and then these two snow globes now this snow globe has a fun story um if i can get her to be in focus i'm gonna pop her 
oh that's dang risky business popping her on my knee but i will pop her on my knee anyway um so this isn't my original one but i got this just after i got my um pewter figure of hermione so again this is probably my second ever piece of merchandise um and it means a lot to me because it was sort of at the same time that my mum was sort of getting me these things as like you can make it through school situation and this was found on ebay um and then i was cleaning my room when i was about 11 or 12 probably um again harks back to the ocd thing i would dust a lot and so i was taking this off my shelf to dust and um which is <laughs> i don't know many 12 year olds that do the dusting but i was dusting and um the snow globe smashed i dropped a bunch of pennies on it which is a really weird way to smash it but a, a bunch of pennies dropped on it and they smashed it and so i was really upset but i still kept it because you know and also this scroll had broken off at some point and so we'd glued it back on and then the day i went to the Harry Potter studio tour for the first time i woke up and i went to my shelf like i was just looking around my room like getting ready and stuff and i was so excited like the first time i went to the hybrid studio tour is like one of the happiest days of my life and it made me feel so weird for a week afterwards like i felt like empty and like i just needed to go back it was just it was a really cool experience for me and it, it it's like it, it was just so cool and so that morning i was looking and i was like oh my god my snow globe's fixed like it was like this and it was all fixed and i was like what has happened here and basically my mum wanted it to be like a magical surprise to be like the day i went to haribo studio tour my snow globe got fixed and she'd actually bought me another one off ebay so this isn't my original one the original one is in this house somewhere um in a box somewhere because i didn't want to throw it away even though it's broken um although i have no idea where it is so this isn't the original but it means a lot to me because um it obviously came back to me fully fixed on the day i went to haribo studio tour for the first time because my mum wanted it to be like a magical thing which that like sums up my mum in a story like she is that kind of gal who just she she just wanted to make be smiled and she thinks about these things like um that's why my mum is like the best mum in the world i know everyone thinks their mum's the best mum in the world but mine really really is um so she's cool and i know you can get other ones of these but i've i and i did look on ebay for a little while but i'm i'm happy with my two my two little buddies here and then this is a love potion that i got in a recent geek gear box um which is kind of cool um but i'm just keeping it there for the time being until i can find somewhere else to put it and then this is this like tin again it's like 2001 merch so i'm gonna try and speed up because i realize i'm taking this is literally gonna be like an hour long video which some of you might like but some of you are gonna be like laura what what are you doing so this shelf is super cluttered because i haven't it's uh, moving stuff back from uni has been a, an issue so um nothing's really where i want it to be at the moment and like i said i'm moving stuff down into my shed so um it's a process but down here we've basically got a um like writing stationary box under there which is like has quilt it has like um the wax seals and some like paper and stuff in it and then we've got the artifact boxes which i've gone into detail with in separate videos but they're probably very bad quality and from a very long time ago so i might redo them at some point um but they're just the artifact boxes for harry ron and hermione and they have like cool stuff in it and then we've got this which is a music box that connor got me for my 21st i also have another one which sarah again that lovely lovely fan sent me and it's a music box that when you turn it it plays um Hedwig's theme i realize this is out of focus just bear with me it says i solemnly swear i'm up to no good in it and it's very cool um and then we've got this like cute llama thing which i got given as a secret santa gift um from a friend at uni um we have a broken butter beer cup that has a bunch of random stuff in it it has some of these cool key rings which are different wands which i got given for christmas one year which they're just snazzy and i actually keep meaning to attach one of them to my keys and then we have these two gals which i right so they're both hermione but in my head when i was a kid i thought this one was Ginny and this one was hermione and i don't know why because they're quite clearly both hermione because they're wearing her outfits um and i love these they just remind me of being a kid and spending all my money in toys r us which is why i've kept them out for so long and yeah there's just a it's just a throwback and a half when i look at these so um yeah they chill in this little pot down here there's also a kaleidoscope a harry potter kaleidoscope in there somewhere and then i have this no all going wrong so in here is my leftover dollars from america when i went to new york at the start in april even for my 21st slash graduation present which was literally the best week of my life and i was actually looking at pictures this morning from new york like why can i not still be there so i will clean that up in a bit um, because I, I gotta get through this video jumping back up here oh my god i'm literally sweating up here we've got a hamilton 
program from when I saw Hamilton at the Victoria Palace Theatre. That was a couple, like two Christmases ago now. However, wait, sorry, sidebar, sidetrack situation. I did the coolest thing the other, I'm really, is that zoomed in or am I just really close? I'm just really close. So I did the coolest thing. So, well, <laughs> I say I did the coolest thing. I got the opportunity to do a very cool thing. I think I'm gonna throw up. Okay, um, I'll be back. Sorry about that. So for those of you that don't know, I have Crohn's disease, which means um, <laughs> I vomit a lot. Um, and yeah, um, that has not happened in a while. That's vaguely concerning. Anyway, back to the point in hand point in hand that's not a phrase i handed in my cv at a bunch of theatres like because i'm trying to get work experience in a wardrobe department um before i start my national youth theatre course in the summer and um i just like was hedging my bet seeing what would happen so i like blagged my way into stage door at hamilton gave him my cv and i on last tuesday i did a whole day work experience there and i got to watch a lot of the show from the side of the stage um i got to her uh, like watch so that i was like following the wardrobe assistant that dressed the sisters throughout the show so i got to like take part in that which was really cool and i even got to do some repairs in the workroom so there are buttons on hamilton in the west end that i stitched on and it was very cool and there was also a really cool moment where um so my auntie um sort of taught me how to sew and she was like an amazing like seamstress and stuff and when she died i sang time to say goodbye at her funeral um and th uh, she unfortunately died before I really got into sewing um, and I actually started sewing properly and started this whole part of my life because I inherited her sewing machine and her fabric collection um, and like my first big sewing projects were made on that vintage singer um, and as I was sat in the workroom at Hamilton um, the window was open and it was quiet and then music started playing and it was like an instrumental orchestra version of the song I sung at my auntie's funeral and we all sat there in silence sewing and listened to it and then when it finished we were like oh that was really nice and i was just sat there like i'm not sure like if i believe in in like signs like that but it was such a weird surreal moment like of all the songs to play and for the fact they only played once because usually you get a lot of buskers and stuff outside um like in victoria and so i assumed it was like a, a busking group or whatever but it only it, that, that was the only song that played the whole time we were in the workroom and it, it was just like weird because it kind of felt like if it was a sign it would be my auntie being like I'm proud of you like I wish I could have been there to see you do this like cool sewing stuff like because she because she died before I ever realized that costume was something I wanted to go into and um before I made any of the stuff that I've made and um it would have been really cool for her to see that part of my life um because it obviously she was a massive part in giving that part of my life to me um so yeah i know that was a sidebar central um <laughs> from going from literally just looking at a hamilton brochure wow i am queen of sidetracking i just wanted to share that because it was a cool story and uh, i don't know if you in believe in that kind of stuff you might have found it interesting but back to the task in hand so um up here we have my yellow books this is a signed copy of The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling, which I got when I met her at a signing for The Casual Vacancy at Cheltenham Literature Festival, which was quite a few years ago now. And then, yeah, but that's another copy of The Cursed Child. This might be my annotated version um, and a bunch of stuff. There's some cool books up here. I loved Carry On by Rainbow Row. It's literally just a whole book, but fan fiction, and I friggin love it um so there's a lot of cool things up here and then on onto my sort of orange and white shelf um there are some also some cool books here um turtles all the way went down by john green which is very very cool um and girl and Doug haven't actually finished i started reading it it's actually connor's book but it's a very interesting premise so i, I want to finish reading it um and then some more stuff by e lockhart which i he wrote we were liars which i talked about on my uh, shelf my blue shelf and he's just a very good writer so i'd highly recommend anything he writes as well and obviously perks which is one of my all-time favorite books i know it's basic bitch um but it's also oh whenever i flipped it and be like oh i've really annotated these i haven't but this is my most this is one of my most annotated books but obviously it didn't look like it from flipping through it there and then we have wow if i can get that back <laughs> <laughs> and we have some stuff this is my golden egg which i love my try was a cup which is from the harry Potter studio tour and inside it polaroid what is i bet that's the selfie that i took on my polaroid but didn't want to put anywhere because it's embarrassing oh my god what a throwback that is an important polaroid to me geez this was in the back of my phone for ages so this is a polaroid if i can get it to uh zoom in um this is from first year of uni this is my uni flat minus who is that missing minus hannah um so regan gwill 
Daisy and Erin and this was like that was my birthday um in first year and that was like this was a very important Polaroid to me so that's probably why I put it somewhere super safe like up here um and then it's got the Harry Potter um a piece of paper from when I went to the studio tour when they were doing the Goblet of Fire exhibit and then I've got my golden snitch which is from the sticker collection sticker kit like I spoke about the Hedwig so this is a Gringotts key which is from a geek gear box which is very cool it says um vault 175 so yeah it's it's very cool and I like it a lot and then we're moving on to um this shelf down here which has got an array of things so we've got the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire this is a first edition uh, American copy which I got for Christmas I think my mum found it on eBay or something and then we've got the Crimes Grindelwald and the Fantastic Beast screenplay this is then a cool snow globe which I got from the Harry Potter Studio tour of the Hogwarts Express and obviously we've got Pickett and every time I'm laying in bed I look at him and it looks like he's doing like throwing up like a peace sign at me he's like he's like at me from 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 over on the shelf which is cool and I, I love him he's like the bendable one from Noble Collection um, and then we've got some geek gear wands here which I like to just keep chilling my cool little um, Hagrid lamp from Geek Gear which has featured heavily in my skit videos recently um, and my pride pin from when I went to pride the other day um, and then these are my I love pin badges and these are from New York um, these are some of my New York pin badges from the shows I saw and the places I went to because um, this is my little New York section kind of my Deluminators just chilling in the middle which again features in a skit so if you haven't watched my most recent skit video which is um react like the most ridiculous moments in Philosopher's Stone go and check it out um and then so this is what my mum gave me to tell me we were going to New York this is a signed poster from the New York cast of Dear Evan Hansen that again was used in the big reveal of me going to New York um my mum literally put it on my head and then I looked in the mirror and was like what um and this is a Sum Sum from the Disney store in Times Square and these are some Tiffany's boxes from from me and my mum getting our matching Tiffany's bracelets. I think I spoke about this in my room tour video as well um, because I went off on a tangent about how expensive jewellery is and how ridiculous it is to spend money on jewellery. Um, but this is now just holds like the rest of my other jewellery. So one of these boxes is mine, one of these is my mum's. And then these are two stationary kits, which are the Nukes Commander ones, which are exactly the same. But I got sent two because the first one was damaged and they let me keep the first one, which was cool. Um, and now onto this one. These are die cast sets, which I've spoken about in a separate video from a long time ago. Um, so I've got the Hogwarts Express, the Flying Ford Angular and the Anglia and the uh, Night Bus and they're just like three different die casts of it but I won't get them out now. These are two Okami eggs from Geek Gear um, because I think they sent one box which had it in and then they did like a wrap up box or like a special box which had the same thing in it which was annoying but still you know I like it. And then this is just a chocolate frog box. I used to keep all of my chocolate frog boxes but I have had so many in my time, an embarrassing amount, that I actually can't keep them all. So I actually, they're dotted around the house in very random places. And then these are, I actually don't have the newest one of these, I know, but these are the house editions of the Harry Potter books. It was just kind of getting ridiculous. I've got a lot of versions of the Harry Potter books, which I will do a separate video on, um, but it's kind of bonkers, the amount of them that I had, and it just felt... I don't know, I just didn't want to spend more money on the same book just for a different copy of it. Tea strainer from Geek Gear, which is my Gryffindor tea strainer, which I love. Um, and then these are two basilisk fangs. Again, I think I got sent that in the same duplicate box as that one but um I think they're very cool and then we've got my letter opener which I never use to open letters because I don't often get letters but if I did I would use it to open it because it's the Sword of Gryffindor and it's very cool um and then we've got this butterbeer um tub which is from the studio tour when you buy the butterbeer ice cream you can get it in a commemorative tub and in here we've got this which is a pug so basically sorry everyone She's going off on another story time tangent. Basically, um, we drive to Italy every couple of years um, because I am Italian, if you didn't know. Um, my mum's family are Italian. My mother is Italian. Um, and we, yeah, drive to our, like, family house there. Um, and basically, we were on waiting for the ferry either to come back from Italy to get from France to England or the other way around. My dad was in a hella bad mood. And basically, we had this hack, which doesn't work anymore, but in those machines where you, like, put in a euro, you twist it and a toy comes out, they have them in, like, the UK as well if you put in like a pound or two pounds um basically there used to be a hack that worked where if you put in two peas it would work 
they've sussed it out so that doesn't work anymore so we did that and it and it came out this little pug and it's this tiny little plastic pug toy and my mum I don't even know what started it, but my mum started going, I am Eugene the pug, and she started speaking a French accent the whole time. And um, my, it was the funniest thing. I can't even explain why it was funny. We're probably very sleep deprived. Um, this was many years ago now, so I'm surprised I still have it, but like, it's very dear to my heart. Um, and my dad got so annoyed with my mum's French accent that she kept going on about Eugene the pug that she, my dad literally got out of the car and left. Like he went on a walk to like chill out. It was so funny. And um, so from then on, I've always wanted a pug called Eugene purely for these purposes. I'll show you the rest while I'm here. And then I've got this, which is this time turner means an awful lot to me. And which is weird because it's literally just like a plastic one that came again in the sticker kit collections so it was literally like five pounds but i got it for my birthday when i was in i think year nine at secondary school and that's when i really rediscovered harry potter again like i've always been a potter fan since i was literally a, a fetus basically when i was yeah in about year eight or nine i really rekindled my deep love for it that's never gone away since and so for that birthday I got given this and I wore it under my school uniform literally every single day like I was so obsessed with it I loved it so so much and so that's why I keep it out on my shelf and I don't put it away with the rest of my Harry Potter jewellery and these two things are charms this is Tom Riddle's diary and this is the Firebolt and they're charms that you can get from Noble Collection and they're very cool I haven't found necklaces that I want to keep them on for like permanently at the moment but if I I have a gold chain that I often like switch them out on if I want to wear them and they're very cool so that you can get them from the Noble Collection store and I can't remember how much they are. They're not super expensive, but they're also not like hella cheap either. But they've got lots of different varieties of them in both gold and silver. Noble Collection, please sponsor me. So moving back onto the shelf. So we've got more Time Turner action. This is again, this is my second favorite Time Turner I own because I wanted it for so long and I got it for Christmas a couple of years ago. It's just really cool and I never see it that often in store or like online. And it's just, oh, if I can focus, it's, um, it's just, a noble collection time turner but it's just in a really snazzy snazzy box and then we've got my uh quaffle which is from the harry Potter studio tour it, yeah and it's just really cool it's it's quite nice quality and it's fun if you want to play a game of quidditch and be like accurate with it this is a liquid luck bottle from geek gear and this is a noble collection hip flask i really wish it was like safe to use as an actual hip flask because the amount of parties i've been to that i've been like that would be cool to just like whack this out and drink some you know vodka from um which it, it's just a cool thing to have and then this is a noble collection uh pin badge set um which i didn't want to like take out of my box and put on my other pin badges because um i like having it in its proper in its proper little box then down here is an array of things this is where stuff starts to get super messy because i haven't really worked out where i'm putting things yet but i have my pin badge collection which i've got two boards and they both have like an array of harry potter pins on them um we've got some these are sherbet lemons from geek gear this box did have my golden egg necklace in it although um did it yeah no it did and my but my egg is currently um in another place because i was using it for something um and then i've got some wands actually that's an interactive wand back there and then these die casts so i've got the hogwarts express and the night bust because i used to be obsessed with die casts and then obviously this is a teapot of mrs potts from beauty and the beast which more will be revealed in my beauty and the beast slash disney shelf at the bottom there um but it didn't fit down there and i was using it for the tea video that i made um and behind here just quickly are some oh my god that saucer is gonna go um there's just some play sets and and stuff which um from when i was a kid and this is a stocking holder it's so christmas themed but i still have it out from the harry Potter studio tour because um it's just very very cool and it's, they did them in different houses and stuff and it's fun for christmas now on my bottom shelf we have an array of things it's mostly um beauty and the beast themed apart from this is my beaded bag which i made it's hermione's beaded bag i made it in my textiles a level so all of this was handmade um i think i've spoken about it in a couple of videos um like the amount of work that went into this because people are like oh it's just a bag i'm like no this was months of my life's work um but then i have a bunch of these like coin purses that are um beauty and the beast themed and then all my beauty and the beast simsums a beauty and the beast cup this cool um snow globe which is like a limited edition collector's item which plays taylor's oldest time um and then this cup is from frozen broadway and this um is a very cool snow globe which has 
I've had for a very very long time that's Little Mermaid themed um, which I think I spoke about in my other video and then obviously I have Cogsworth just chilling and this cool light that says happiness can be found even in the darkest of times um, which I've had for again a very very long time. So that was my bookcase. I have literally two hours of footage. How did I do that? I don't know. I speak a lot. What you need to understand is that I'm very alone, very lonely. I Now I'm not at uni, now that my only job really is this. This is the only time I speak during the day, so I have to get all my speaking out in like one hit. So I've managed to talk a lot, make this a long ass video. Um, so I'm probably gonna try and edit it down a bit, but just prepare yourself. Um, I hope you had a nice like cup of tea, a snack while you watched this. And I hope it was informative and was what you guys wanted. Let me know what kind of videos you want for the future, because this, like I said, is what I'm doing now. So um, I need to try and like, get in the zone, get filming, sort my life out. Uh, like I said at the start of the video, like this video if you liked it, and subscribe down below, turn on my notification bell so you don't miss another upload, and follow my social medias. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time. Hopefully if you didn't watch this and were like, I never want to hear her speak again. And I would respect you if that was your standpoint. Standpoint, viewpoint, standing. Okay, time to go. Bye, see you later.